Hello, I'm Eric Edelmeyer with Anovo Company. I'd like to introduce you to Dave DeCam. You want anything to say first, Dave? We got me just to talk about you for a while. Well, yeah, you can talk okay. about me for a little while. Dave, Dave's relatively new with us. He's pushing a year now, I think. Just over a year. Just over a year now. He's joined us uh, after 32 years in the flooring industry. So Dave's bringing a lot of expertise to us from the field. Uh, this is Dave's 1.3 or 1.23 webinar you've done with us. Yep. He he was basically a uh, a gopher for the, the the last one we did. So, so yeah. you you did you did well. So good. you know, thank you for that. Now you know, now you're on camera and you get to talk. And, good, good to be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And speaking of that, this is about our fifth or sixth webinar that we've done. So hopefully you've seen some of the ones in the past. If not, uh, they are available either on our website or online, YouTube. Um, so you know, go back and look at some of the past ones we've done. Uh, if this is your first time joining us for the webinar, welcome. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Uh, we usually do these pretty informal. Um, I mean, we you know, we kind of jump around a little bit. Uh, there's a few areas where we've cheated a little bit just for the sake of time. But uh, you know, as always, we say follow the written directions of the product you're using. Follow the industry guidelines, whether it's the ANSI handbook or the Tile Council of America uh, handbook. Uh, you know, you want to do things right. You know, so we're going to have some areas here where we might go down a little bit of a path that's not exactly right. Then we're wrong. So follow the written directions of whatever you're, whatever it is you're using. Um, I mean, with that said, we're going to kind of jump into this. Um, we are on an exterior deck here. Um, it's a beautiful day outside here in, in Michigan. It's probably 75, 80 degrees. So uh, that's that's kind of nice for change. But jumping into this, Dave, give us a couple ideas. Of, you know, some, some what are some standard things we need to look for on a typical let's call it a residential deck. Yep, okay. Are we wood or are we concrete? Nope, those are the two big things. Yep. You know, um, for this application, we are a wood deck. Okay. So one thing we want to check out with wood is our joist spacing. Okay. You know, 16 on center or better. Yep. Um, exterior glue, plywood. Yep. Um, yeah, and more, most importantly, we need flat. Right. Yep, and level. Yep, flat and level. Yep. Okay. Um, the one of the areas that we got over here is, is is this is a simulated door. If you can see it over there, it's obviously it's a mini door uh, or a dog door. Um, but why is the height of that really a critical aspect of this whole thing? You want to make sure that when you because each deck will need a quarter inch slope, and you want to make sure that whatever length that deck is, right. as you go back, that your your quarter inch slope does not take you above the height of your threshold. Right, so you, you, you kind of got to figure your length from your low point Correct. to your deck, calculate the tile, the backer board, whatever else might be going in there yep. to make sure that it's all gonna fit. Yep. Okay. Yep. And along with that, you want to figure out your, your L over 360 or L over 720. Right, to make sure this whole thing's gonna, yep. gonna hold us, okay. I mean, typically, you know, we, we'd be, you know, going down that path and, you know, usually you're probably doing that with a mortar bed or something about, but, you know, here again, I, I just based on the wall here, we're probably doing vinyl siding on this or yep. something. Yep. But let's say it's vinyl siding. Yep. So you yeah. need to consider whether it's vinyl or wood or brick or. Yep. Because it all flashes different. Right. Okay. So yeah, so I mean, if if it happened to be a, a brick or something like that, you know, you might need a riglet to tuck that into. If it's stucco, you got to run the the, the 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 stucco brown coat over top of it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that's all good. You know, just you know, continuing on down the path here of of the typical deck. You know, another common thing that you see in a lot of these decks is rails, handrails. Yeah. So there's two ways we can do the rails. We have top mounted rails. On the deck itself. On the deck itself. Yep. Or, yep. Yep. Penetrating the deck itself. Yep. Um, the other way would be what we call fascia mounted. Okay. Where we go to the uh, the vertical front of it. Right. Yep. I would assume that's the, the preference that we're not penetrating the membrane on the horizontal surface. Definitely. The preference. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Um, you know, an another thing to consider here is getting rid of the water. Right. Right. So we can shed water single slope okay. and just shed it right off the edge. Yep. Um, sometimes that's not the option that the homeowner would want. Right. Yep. And we can incorporate a drain. Um, it can it can go into a gutter. Okay. 
Okay. And then normally you're probably going to build that slope with a mortar bed. Right. Four to one. Yep. Four to one. Just tar paper, lath, whatever, you know. Yeah. Tar paper, lath. Well, yeah, lath, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Four and then, to one. I mean, you know, you, what, what are you looking for the mortar bed? I mean, you talked earlier about this being a wooden deck, and we got to be able to support this weight. So there we're going to start talking, uh, yeah, loads. Yeah, yeah, loads. Live load, dead load. Yeah. Um, so dead load on an 8x8 eight eight deck, which is comparable to what this size is. Right. Yep. So 8x8 eight eight deck, your one bed, one foot square, one inch thick, yep. 12 pounds. 12 pounds per square foot, one inch thick. Yep. So obviously in a deck this size, closer to the house, I might be two inches, three inches or more. Yep. So realistically, you could have two, three thousand pounds on this deck. Easy. Okay. And then you, we haven't even calculated any live load at that right. point. Right. Yeah. I mean, five of you would add another hundred, hundred fifty pounds at least. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So I mean, really, you know, you start getting in some of these wooden decks like this, typical resident. You might want to get an engineer or someone to really structurally look at this thing. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. Good thought. So, I mean, that, that's a lot of weight. You know, in a lot of these decks, you probably simply don't have the carrying capacity for that. What options do we have, Dave? <laughs> well, we happen to have a product called Pro Deck. So... Pro Deck. Pro Deck. Pro Deck. Yep. Prodec is a three pound uh, EPS foam okay. uh, with our honey foam on top of it. Yeah. It adds a lot of strength and rigidity to it. Uh, it bumps up the PSI to 235 pounds. So um, it, takes your, it increases it by that much. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's, In, this, this is sloped. This is sloped. You want to hold your end up? Right. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, this, the Prodec panels already had the quarter inch slope. Yep. Built into them. Yep. Yep. So the system starts out. There's three skews. It starts out at a half inch thick. Goes up to one and a half. Inch. Right. So that's what we call panel A. Yep. Panel B marries up to panel A. And starts out at one and a half inch thick. Yep. Goes up to two and a half inch thick. Okay. Yep. And then beyond that is the third skew, okay. which is a flat two inch. Foam. Yeah. We call it a shim. Okay. Yep. And that one just happened to have one there. Just happened to have one here. So that's your flat shim. Yep. And then, then again, this one here is is basically I don't know if that can that slope shows up on here or not. So I mean, it's been cut down already, but there's a quarter inch per foot. Yep. Slope that goes on top of that. Exactly. And that is also panel A. That we okay. start over with to get on top. So it's literally three SKUs. Three. Yep. Okay. Okay. Really good. Yep. Um, why don't you go ahead and you know finish installing this the, the slope here? Like I said, these have already been previously installed. Um, you know, the 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 panel, you know, shim and panel A. Um, yep. you know, it's like I say it's pre-cut the size, that would go right in there. What are you using to bond this down with, Dave? Today we're using EXT. Okay. Um then we also could use thin set. Yeah, the regular latex modified thin set, like a 118.15 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the good exterior yep. stuff. Yep. Okay. So you're just using a, a standard standard size match trial. What do you got there? Or what do you recommend? <laughs> yeah. Well, for this one, I'm going a little bit um, deeper of a notch. We're going over to Yeah. Rock. Okay. Yeah. You want to be able to get enough in there? Yep. Spread like butter? Just like butter. I mean, as far as, far as you know, getting this all out of the deck versus mud, I mean, you know, you're, you're looking at a lot of mortar to get it up here. If you're buying four to one, um, I, I think we kind of calculated that you'd be looking at about you know, 13 bags, 13 80 pound bags. Uh, not calculating in the, in the, in the thickness over there versus these panels. Or what, what did you say? One panel laid 30 pounds. Is that what you said? Eight pounds per yeah. panel, yeah. About yeah. eight pounds per panel, yep. So, yeah, a lot of, lot of savings there just trying to get it up and down the ladder. Oh, yeah, yeah, 
Definitely. So that's just a flat piece or a shim binded down to either your EXT or to your thin set. And then this piece simply is binded to that piece. Yep. I kind of wiggle it in there by hand. Yep. And I know normally that you'd allow the EXT to flash off or kick off a little bit so it gets a little more tacky. Yep. Or you're just walking it like you almost with a large format tile. Yeah. So that's our third skew. Yep. Just like that. That stuff does trawl out nice. It trawls really nice. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Now, I know once it sets up, it's sticky stuff if you've ever used it. Oh, and, and, and once in a while we get to decks where the you know you, you might be running it in a different direction or instead of it just being a single flow, now, you have the options for you know, ridges or valleys or you know corners or we do. We just released uh, ridges and valleys. Okay. Yep. So it's kind of a special order situation right now for ridges and valleys. And so now that panel A is installed on top of the flat shell. Yep. So that's going in there. And it's, we continue that quarter inch per foot slope right on down. Makes it pretty easy. I mean, as far as creating, so if you were doing this with mortar, obviously you'd probably still be, still be mixing. Yeah. Or carrying. <laughs> both. Yeah, both. Many trips. So. Yeah. So then you just continue the same process right across the rest of the deck. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Once we got that all done, obviously this product is not waterproof as it sits. So we're putting a waterproofing membrane over the top of it. Exactly. Um, I mean, that's that'd be obviously for if you know the Noble Company, that'd be our Noble Deck membrane. Uh, Noble Deck membrane is a CPE chlorinated polyethylene membrane. Designed for exterior applications, meets the waterproofing 118.10 standard, the crack isolation standard, um, and you're going to bond that with the same EXT. We're going to go with the EXT on okay. this demo. All right, well, throw some of that down quick, and I'll I'll walk over here and grab a roll of a membrane. While Dave is spreading some EXT on that floor there, uh, this is the Noble Deck membrane. Uh, we we actually have it pre-cut to size already. Uh, it's a six foot wide membrane, 40 mil thick. Uh, it has a non-woven polyester on both sides, so you can basically adhere directly to it with either uh, a latex modified thin set or the Noble Bond EXT. Uh, this product has been out for over 20 years now, uh, so it's got a pretty good track record. Um, you know, between the Noble Deck and the base itself, I mean, they're not designed for a long-term UV exposure. Uh, they are supposed to be covered with a tile or a hard surface. Um, so, you know, don't, don't put it down and leave it exposed for an extended period of time. Plan ahead a little bit. You know, Dave, Dave's just kind of spreading on the EXT there. Uh, you know, enough to get down to hold the membrane into place. Uh, so that, that's pretty easy. Uh, like I said, the, the Noble Deck membrane also meets the crack isolation standard. Um, and, 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 you know, there's, there's some, some other things, too, to consider on this deck. And, of course, you know, as Dave puts the membrane, it's going to go on the horizontal here. We're going to turn it up to vertical uh, behind the, the, the flashing there or the uh, tie back, whatever we want to call it. Um, let, let, let me get a Dave's way over here. Keep Jake on the camera active. So this whole process really doesn't take all that long. Once you, you know, a little bit of pre-planning and that's exactly it. it. It is so much faster than traditional mud. Yeah. 
Putting the membrane into the EX, see a lot of it depends on the environmental conditions that you're at. I mean, obviously, if you're down south in Arizona versus, say, Montana or Florida, depending on the temperature, humidity, um, usually about 10, 15 minutes. Um, it, usually, if you kind of touch it, it'll start to get tacky. You'll actually pull a little bit of legs onto it. You don't want to wait too long like most of these because you want to basically embed it. Uh, Dave has a roller line around here somewhere, which we'll demonstrate in a minute. So that when he's embedding the membrane into the uh, adhesive, it, it really spreads out like a thin set almost. Uh, you get good contact or good coverage. Um, if you get on it too quick, it will cure it as a wet set product. It will set up, but it gets it gets a little bit greasy or slippery underneath the membrane where it can slide around a little bit. Dave's just about done with this. Looking good, Dave. Yeah, just enough. You did that perfect. Well, let's let's throw this membrane into there. You know, I'll I'll, I'll jump off the edge and you stay on the deck. <laughs> okay. Got your side? Yep, got my side. So like I said, when Dave's got this pre-cut to size, get, get it in here. Uh, if we'll explain it in a minute, we got a little drop edge here or, to basically go down the. Uh, the vertical side of this. You got your edge there, Dave? Yep. Okay. I'm just walking on down. Yep. Sliding a little bit over. You got to come over? Yep, there we go. Boy, look at that. Can you get it in your way at all by pulling? Probably not. Yep. Is that good? Close. Close. Good. Close. Here we go. Let's figure out where we put that roller. There it is. So, yeah. Here you go, sir. At this point, you can use a 75 to 100 pill roller. Yep. If it's a smaller deck, you can get by with a little 300 roller. Yep. Flat side of a trowel in some cases, a little more work, but. Yeah, I'd probably go like a wood float, something yeah. like that. So again, you, as you see, the, the, the membrane has actually gone off the edge of the membrane to kind of uh, create its own flashing. Uh, the, a drip edge will be you know, introduced to this here. He's got the membrane uh, against, the, uh, against the house of the vertical laying there that will stand up for a, uh, for a flashing there. But as the membrane goes in pretty quick, uh, it's got lines approximately every six inches. Uh, they're more of a guideline than, than, than an actual true measurement. So you know, always, always use the tape. But it's really, it's, it's pretty much that easy. And how are you gonna handle that corner, Dave? You uh, turn this membrane up against the vertical or? Yeah, we can. Um, We're gonna put an inside corner in first. Okay. Or afterwards, I'm sorry. Yep. So you just cut that corner and. Yep. We, we'll we cut the corner, we'll seam it with 250. Okay. Which is our sealant. Okay, let's, let's see you do that. Yeah. Just do a regular cut folded corner or an overlap corner. And of course, you know, a lot of situations or in some situations you might be able to actually take that folded corner and tuck it into the to the to the jam there where the two pieces of ply are coming together. Uh, more often probably not, but it is an option sometimes. Uh, Dave's got enough material there that he can actually wrap it into again, which would be your door. What do you need, Dave? 250. 250. Thank you. So you want to have enough membrane so that it can come up and wrap into the door, underneath the door plate there, uh, to make sure you get a good solid connection. You don't want it just kind of deadheaded against the door. You want it to flash up underneath there. Uh, the Noble Sealant 250 is a water cure product. The moisture from the air itself helps basically cure the product. Uh, it's a very strong, very very good adhesive. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with sealant, excuse me. Some of you are probably familiar with our Noble Sealant 150. Uh, the Noble Sealant 250. I don't want to say it's a replacement for it because the 150 is still available. 
Uh, but the 250 is very, very, very good product, especially for an exterior application like this. Um, he's just turning up that membrane where you're just tucking it up underneath the uh, the tie back here, Dave? Yep. Okay. And I imagine I can just staple this since we're above the front line anyhow. Yep, as long as we're above the, the flood plane, you above can staple the flood it. Plane behind the tie back to staple it up into place. You got a stapler down there, and we can lose yours. Here, I'll give you mine. Thank you. Oh, it's right up behind your back. Now I'm going to steal yours. So, as you can see, this sounds good in length, I'll bet. Yeah. Aren't you glad you got headphones on now, Jake? <laughs> And obviously, those the staples that we just put in there are, are up almost a foot, so they're uh, you know they're way above any potential flood plane. So I wouldn't be concerned doing that. You could glue them the the flashing up to the vertical if you wanted to there, uh, but really, like I say, behind the flashing like this, you'd be okay. Yep. I mean, you know, you ready for this? Yeah, go ahead and do that. Okay. Dave's now going to basically throw in one of our pre-made corners uh, that, that would go in there. He's got the inside corner in there uh, to kind of catch where he made that cut in the membrane and flashed it over. It's going to catch that innermost pinhole. Um, the Noble Sealant 250 is a great sealant in itself. The inside corner is just some extra integrity to that. Let's see whether he's writing his name. <laughs> Just gonna throw that in there. It's on top of the uh, top of the membrane flash together. The uh, the tie vector in this case, the grip right single layment fifteen is overlapping the product. How you doing there, Dave? Doing good, Eric. Good. So when I I use the sealant to set this corner, and now that I've got the I'm using my margin trowel to make the sealant bleed out. Okay. So you're just kind of drawing it out so you can kind of see it bleed on that edge. Yep. Everything's just fresh and wet enough that things are moving back here, though. Do you need your handy dandy tub of towels yet, or are you doing yeah, good? Yeah, I could definitely use those. You could definitely use them. This commercial was brought to you by Tub of Towels, a product from the Noble Company. How was that good, Dave? That's good. Uh, when your boss is here, you got to get the plugs in. Thank you. Good. We are good. Okay, so we've got that done now. And now, of course, the next question that everybody is probably wondering is, how are you going to handle this door? Again, you want the membrane to counter flash into this. So you're just going to basically take the uptrend that you have there. You planned ahead so that you had enough material that you exactly. can just basically cut it down to the jam and lay it in. Probably say staple that right into place, I imagine, once, once the door plates go on the top of it. Pretty easy. Very easy. Then you're back to throwing an outside corner in there to catch the door jam. Make sure that's all sealed up tight. Yep. So that one will go there, but we're not going to put that one on. Okay. Yeah. Show. Yeah. Just do the other side where they might be able to see it on camera. Yep. So that's going right in there. Yep. And again, same 250. Yeah. We'll use 250 again. So that's really catching where that membrane's laying in there flat against that jam. Uh, you don't want just an open seam right there. Okay. Well, I got to do this. Get that seam out, get that out of your way. Yeah. <laughs>
you get just a liberal amount of sealant in there to make sure you get a good connection. They can bleed it or pull it back out again. And I think you can probably see down. I can't see that close enough that uh, you can see where that corner now is basically touching the horizontal, the vertical transition there on both the jam and the, the, the drop edge. Um, you can see this sealant kind of bleeding out to the edge to make sure you've got enough sealant in there to make sure it's watertight. And then once he did that on the outside, which is, I guess, technically, and this guy, I guess, in, in the inside of the door itself. Uh, and then on the other side, so you'd have done four outside corners to, to finish off that entire door jam. So right about there, you're really done. Pretty much. Picking up a little bit of the extra two, Noble Scene 250 that bled out there. Uh, just kind of keeps it from getting all over everything. Okay, it was pretty much that easy. Easy breezy. Okay. Now, I, I, I guess the next question that I'd probably have is, and I think that might be the time for it, is what about the, the drop edge or the, the, the drip edge of the product? So there, you have a number of choices. You could use a regular drip edge from a big box store. Yep. Yep. Um, in I'll, this case, I'll jump down. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did I have good hang time? <laughs> yeah, in this case, uh, we have this one. Oh. This one um, is meant to incorporate a gutter. Okay. Yep. So it would go here, here over the membrane there, and over the membrane, and then your gutter would go up underneath here. Okay. Yep. So that whatever water gets shed goes off the side. So it's, it's really it's protecting that edge, any capillary action, nothing's getting around that. Exactly. Um, and typically you're going to put that down with a thin set, I would imagine, thin when set. you're bonding the tile or at some point therein. Okay. Exactly right. So I guess you know one thing. You know now that we've got this done in the, the basin here, I mean natural stone that's suitable for exterior. Pretty much everything's okay on top of this. Um, yeah. Product. You get into natural stone. Now we're yep. talking the L over seven twenty. Okay. And then as far as the the the, the bonding the tile or the stone goes, following the typical guidelines. Yep. Yep. So what's Another thing we got to talk about when we talk about decks, now we're getting ready to start tiling, expansion joints. Right. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. We, we like a movement joint along the house. Okay. Um, and then every 8 to 12 feet. Okay. But that's a big barrier, 8 to 12. Right. You know, so we got to really pay attention to the climate we're in. Okay. Uh, the warmer it gets, we may need them more often. Okay. You know, or closer together. Right? Yep. So yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, uh, change of planes is always another place we put a movement joint. Um, yeah, and yeah. So I mean, that's really that's that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, we kind of blew through that relatively quick, but hopefully you can kind of see the potential speed that you can do a deck here. I mean, I grant some of the work was already done, but as far as creating the the slope itself. Um, you know, we have a quarter inch per foot slope on this deck we're running off. It's pre-waterproof right now, or it's now it's waterproof. The next panels we go in here, which we'll brings back to another thought that I'm having here. What if I didn't want to run the membrane off the deck? What if I want to go to a drain? Well, we happen to make drains. Just so happened? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> Let me hand you this, Dave. Let, let's, let's just say that we got a drain land in here somewhere. Wherever you want to put it here. Okay. You're, you're, the, you're the laborer. I'm the brains of this organization. Okay, so obviously that deck would be installed. Put where you want it to go. It could be you know, at the edge, it could be in the middle, it could be anywhere. But for the discussion. Here. For today, it's right here. So yeah, this is this is our freestyle drain. This is this one here is 100 percent PVC. And it can go two ways. We can go top set, which we're going to show here today. Um, so that's one and a quarter inches. And it can also, if that's too tall as a starting point, we can notch out the subfloor 
right? Rest it on its ears and the floor joists. Okay, so then you, you've lowered it down to three eighths of an inch? Then? Three eighths of an inch. Okay. Yep. So yeah, this is a miniature panel A that we cut back to receive the drain. Okay, so you've taken the, your panel A to cut it to, to a one and a quarter inch at the drain. Correct. And now on the outside, I'm simply picking up with panel a panel B. So again, depending on where the drain was, we just create our, our, our slopes to it. Yeah. So that's pretty easy. That was very, very easy. Oh, the, the, the waterproofing, the question came in is, is how is the waterproofing tied into this? The waterproofing would go down the exact same way. This particular drain has a stainless steel clamping ring. So the membrane would basically go in there and you're basically screwing down the clamping ring. Yep. Beat a sealant, clamping ring. Okay. Yep. And then adjustable strainer. Exactly. A lot of people ask how tough this stuff is. The the product. The product how, how, how tough is it? I, I was going to ask that. Yeah. How tough is it, Dave? Well, let's just find out, shall we, Eric? Okay. Here's a standard, standard piece of foam. So this is just a regular run out. I'll hit it three times, three different spots. Okay. So you can see, I don't know if it picks up on camera. Bring it closer, yeah. That easily went down at least a quarter inch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now the, the pro deck, this happens to be with our, our, our bloom honeycomb out of it. You it's really, really got a lot. Yeah. Yep. And, and just so no one thinks, hit it, hit it on the white one. Just so it's, some, it's not magic foam. It just happened to, I, I happen to grab a, on, on, on the, the white yeah. foam. All right. All right, I didn't want somebody to think that the blue was something magic. Just have to, I happened to grab blue there. Yep. So either way, you can kind of see that there's a pretty good impact resistance. Um, so there's there's plenty of strength there. Did we forget anything, Dave? I don't think we did. I think we're done. Can you leave this set for a week before you tile it? No, the question came in, can I leave it set for a week before I tile it? The answer is, 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 is I'm going to say no. Obviously, there potentially could be some options to that, like tenting or yeah, protecting yeah. it. or Yep, you can use white EPS foam to cover it up. Just some sort of protection course over top. But okay, I think that was it. Uh, we are going to be giving away a uh, $500. $500. I know that. 250. We can pocket the 250 ourselves. So I'll never know. <laughs> We're going to give give away a 500. Oh, did Dave's here? We're going to be giving away a $500 online credit uh, to a contractor. Okay. To a contractor. Let's do it. Yeah, contractor. contractor. So uh, we'll be drawing that name after after the fact. Obviously, we uh, we appreciate you watching. Uh, we thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to us or your local sales representative, whoever that might be. Um, but it's it's a pretty straightforward system. It's fast, it's easy, it's lightweight. Uh, obviously, with the Noble Deck on it, it's completely waterproof. Uh, it's suitable for pretty much any tile. Uh, you know, we, we were talking uh, before the show started. If, if this were an 8 by 8 deck, yeah, we figured the weight was right around 1,000 pounds. Yeah. What is the program? We, we figured that out, and I want to say, did we come up with 50 pounds? Yeah, it was right around. Yeah, I think, I think it was 50 pounds versus a thousand pounds, if I if I remember the math right. Yep. Um, so it's, it it saves you a lot of weight. It does open up a lot of potential decks to you that you might want to tile that you have concerns about loading. Uh, again, always check to make sure that it that it structurally is strong enough, but it it'll save you a lot of on that live and dead load. Yes. Yes. Um, I think we're good here. Um, again, thank you for watching us. I will do another one of these soon. This was kind of Dave's and Nair's first official one together.
Uh, thank you, Dave. Phenomenal job. Thank you, Eric. Well, well done. Do this, do this again. Uh, maybe next time we'll do it on bass fishing or sure or campfires or yep. something. 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 Yeah. Bass fishing might be good. <laughs> again, thank you very much.